This video has been made possible thanks to EA Game Changers. Magic is finally back in The Sims franchise, with its history going way back to The Sims 1 and making magic. For anyone who has been playing The Sims since its early days, Making Magic is one of the most beloved DLCs. And although I never gave The Sims 3 Supernaturals a real try, I was really excited to see Max's take on a magic-oriented pack for The Sims 4, and how it compared to previous DLCs. And I have to admit, it's been hard not to spend this past week just playing the game and say, screw YouTube, I need to level up to the next rank and learn the spell so I can burn Vlad alive before he breaks into my house. But here we are, doing a good old overview of The Sims 4 realm of magic. Every magical setup needs a magical world to go with it. Glimmerbrook is a small town located in a forest valley. There's a total of five lots, two of them occupied by families, one start at home, an empty lot and one public venue. But that's not it! Glimmerbrook hides a secret by the end of the river, the portal to the magic realm. You have right, we have a buy one, get one free because Realm of Magic has in fact two small worlds for the price of one. The story of the Magic Realm is that a vortex began to destroy everything, but the three sages managed to save some of it. And to this day, they are the ones who are keeping it from being completely destroyed. Which is the reason why there's floating pieces of rocks, bridges and buildings. The Magic Realm is one massive lot divided in four sections, to where you can travel easily through the portals or by flying on your trusty broom without a loading screen. The headquarters is the main area of the Magic Realm, where spellcasters come to learn and practice magic. The gardens is a small lot with a beautiful greenhouse where you can collect fish, plants and frogs. The caster's alley is the place where you can buy all kinds of magic-related items, although it's way smaller than the Yagons Alley. There's three stores, one's Tom's and Familiars, Rooms and Crystals, and Potion Ingredients. The stock changes and you will find new items after every day and you can haggle with the vendors to get better prices. Speaking of the vendors, they look like ghosts, but they are indeed astral projections, which unfortunately are not an included skill in this pack. And there's also the Duel Grounds, where you can challenge and be challenged by other spellcasters to a spellcasting duel. Magic duels can be either be a friendly interaction or a mean interaction, and your sim sometimes will learn new spells when dueling with another sim. You can really have a duel anywhere, but the duel grounds will make it look more epic. Skubapa. Ah! Huh? Oh! Ha! Ah! Ah! The Magic Realm does have a day and night cycle, but it's pretty different from any human world. It's pretty purpley and mysterious, and it's also not affected by seasons. And who are these strange visitors in the Magic Realm? If you guessed witches, you're wrong. They're spellcasters. The spellcasters are the fifth life state added to The Sims 4. They came with two new life aspirations under knowledge and nature, both related to spellcasting and potion brewing. To become a spellcaster, you can either select their occult form and create a sim, or for gameplay and storytelling purposes, ask for the Reich of Ascension to one of the three sages, who are one of these guys? They'll tell you to do a simple task, collect seven magical modes and return to them. In the future, these modes will give you some extra power. Once you become a spellcaster, you'll receive a glimmer rock that will allow you to teleport to the magic realm. It does need to recharge after every use and it takes about a same day before you can use it again. You will also receive a spell book that will show you the different types of magic and your progression. Your needs panel also changed slightly, and on the bottom you'll be able to see your rank as a spellcaster and your progression to reach the next level. Like vampires and get famous, after you reach a new rank, you'll get some points to redeem new spellcaster perks. Spellcasters can definitely have a lineage, and their kids will be spellcasters as well. But like the X-Men, their powers only will start to manifest when they become teenagers. This new generation of spellcasters will also come with a few perks and bonuses, the same way parenthood added the ability to influence your kid's personality with the parenting skill. But at least, kids are able to bind their own familiars. Familiars are first in the Sims franchise. They were a folkloric spirit that was believed to be some sort of guardian or assistant to witches in medieval times. Such a pretty kitty! And they had various different appearances, often as animals and sometimes with vivid bright colors and smoky undefined forms. In The Sims 4, families will follow your sims around protecting them from death. They can either be purchased or if you happen to own cats and dogs, you can transform your own furry children into a witchery guardian. These familiars are not much different than the regular pets when transformed, and you'll know they become familiars because of their sparkly aura. And when sent to forage, they will find magical items. As for the regular familiars, there's a huge variety and two of the same type can be different. There's owls, ravens, fairies, skulls, butterflies, dragons, 
and many, many more. Your sim can own more than one familiar, however, you can only summon one at a time. And speaking of summoning, let's talk about spellcasting. The most important thing you should know about magic in The Sims 4 is that it's a power, not a skill, and it's considered a secret art, so you won't see any sims performing magic outside the magic realm. Unless you, the player, don't care about the rules and go around casting magic spells in other worlds. There's four styles of spell casting, and you can either practice several of them or just go through one path. There's about 24 spells, 15 different potions you can craft, and a colorful arrange of curses. Practical magic consists on useful spells to clean, cook, or garden in between others. Mischief is more about playing with other sims' emotions or even stealing. Untamed magic plays with the elements, death or curses, or even clone sims. And alchemy is nothing less than the art of potion crafting. Similarly to regular skills, your spellcaster will gain ranks as they practice and use magic, and with every rank, they will unlock new interactions and abilities. You will start by reading books, which you can either buy at the Caster's Alley or look for toms in the Magic Realm's headquarters, although you might find toms that are out of your rank. Once you reach the Neophyte rank, you'll be able to practice magic by yourself and experiment in the cauldron to learn new spells and potions. But be careful when trying out new spells, because they can backfire and curse yourself. And now that everything is nicely laid out, these are my thoughts. Ever since Parenthood came out, I've noticed that the developer team dedicated to game packs really nails it. Somehow, they managed to make a pack that is supposed to have half the content of an expansion pack more complete. And comparing Island Living with Realm of Magic, I can't help but notice that there was just as much if not more to do in Realm of Magic. The Sims 4's gameplay lacks certain difficulty. There is less work to do to achieve your goal, and it's overall less grindy and easier than previous Sims games. Realm of Magic does bring some of that grinding back with the looking for spells, finding the right items to craft potions, and reading the right books to make your spellcaster a master of the arts. It feels a lot closer to making magic than I thought it would, and I enjoy that. There's only one thing that I wish they put more work into, and that's the magical side of kits. I'm aware of the reasons why, but I'm disappointed to see that once again kids and toddlers got put aside. Not even a single piece of clothing? Come on! Becoming a spellcaster felt a little bit too easy, as all you have to do is travel to the magic realm as a muggle sim? and ask one of the sages. You wander into what's supposed to be a secret world, come up to a master of one of the most dangerous and ancient arts, and say, hey man, I want in too. Sure man, here you go. I think that maybe adding two more tasks or tests to prove that you're worthy would have made it a bit more exciting. Overall, I did really enjoy my time playing with Realm of Magic, just as much as I enjoy playing Making Magic. And this is definitely one of those packs that I will get for myself in a heartbeat.